Well, hey there, YouTube. Welcome. You've got that funk. I hope you're doing well. This is a video response to a, I guess, a flame war that I had on Twitter. It's the first time I've ever had a flame war on Twitter with someone I'm acquainted with. Previously, when I've had flame wars, and it's rare that I ever do, but it's always been with people I've never met before who don't know where I'm coming from and, and so forth. And uh, generally speaking, even when I do have a flame war on Twitter, I try not to uh, degenerate the exchange into name calling or anything like that. I try to stick to the arguments, which is what I did tonight. Um, and I'm not going to be reiterating the flame war here in the video, so don't worry about that because it's not really about that. It's really about a singular point which I want to make, um, which is a response, I suppose, to the very last comment that was made to me. I was basically making a similar point to the one I made in my video, Muslims are not terrorists, the other day, which is to say that we in the West, the United States in particular, um, have <laughs> contributed in some way to the situation that we find ourselves in now as regards uh, Islamic extremist terrorism against the West. And I do not understand why it is so difficult for people to acknowledge that we have contributed to this problem without leaping to the uh, assumption or uh, conclusion or whatever that by saying we've contributed to it, we're saying it's our fault, that we've caused it. No, 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 no. I was explicit in my video the other day, and I'll reiterate today. It is always the fault of the perpetrators who commit crimes, who commit acts of war. It's always the fault of the person who plants the bomb or pulls the trigger or fires the rocket or whatever. It's always their fault. They're ultimately to blame for their actions 100%. But of course, it's also the fault and responsibility of the people who gave them those orders, the people who furnished them with those weapons, etc., etc., etc. There's a long chain of, of fault when it comes to these sorts of things. And because there's a long chain, we have to be able to recognize our chinks in the chain. It's no good uh, pointing at the other guys and, and, and saying that it's all their fault and not looking at what we've done to contribute to it. Now I keep on using the word contribute for a reason because it was fundamental in the comment section that a comment exchange I had on Twitter with the, my, my viewer because he was conflating com causation and um, and uh, what's the word? Let me look at it. Let me just read you what he said. He said, I'm not conflating anything. Contribution is a type of causation. These aren't two separate concepts. And I would agree with that. They're not separate concepts. They are also not the same concepts. They're quite different. They're related, of course, but they're not the same. And it seems to me that that sort of comment is trying to imply that because uh, we can't justifiably or rightly and and I agree with this we can't say oh you know the situation that happened in Paris is our fault I, I don't I never said that I never even implied that I kept saying over and over again it's the terrorists fault and I would draw the line even further you know I would point to the you know their interpretation of the the verses in the Quran which tell them that this is okay I, I would point to their higher ups I would point to an awful lot of different people and I'm honest enough frankly to point the finger at myself as well in that video because like I said in that video we all bear some responsibility for the uh, state of the world. And that is especially true if you live or come from a democratic country where you choose your representatives who act on your behalf. You know, um, how many of the terrorists who are bombing shit and killing people, uh, how many of them chose their leaders? Or, you know, gave them money to get weapons with? You know, so anyway, I'm digressing off my point. Causation is not the same thing as contribution. I was saying that we have contributed to the situation, and I don't think you can argue that point. If you can honestly look me in the face and say that nothing we've done, nothing in our foreign policy has in any way contributed to the rise of radical Islamic extremist terrorism in the world, nothing. Not one thing. Because that's the case you would have to make if you'd like to be able to say that we haven't, you know, that we aren't partly to blame for this. We aren't, you know, we haven't helped make the situation happen. Of course we've helped make the situation happen. I can't even believe that's in contention. Contributed, yes, not caused. I'd like to 
Pardon me if I seem condescending, but I'd like to use a couple of metaphors to explain what I mean, uh, to make it a bit more obvious about the difference between causation and contribution. Okay, so I apologize if I insult anyone's intelligence, but let's just say that you buy a box of dominoes and you bring them home from the store, and then you open the box of dominoes and you put the dominoes on the, a big flat table and you line them all up in a row. Okay, so they zigzag across the table until you get to the last domino. And then you push the first domino over, and of course it will knock into all the dominoes next to it, and the last domino falls off the edge of the table on the other side. Now, is the last domino who fell off on the other side, is it your fault that the domino fell off? Yes, because the exact same energy that you used to push the first domino over was transferred as every domino fell. The same exact energy just got transferred. Okay, So yes, it's your fault. That's causation. Let's just say you bought a box of dominoes and brought them home and opened them up and spilled them all over the table and then you decided to go and take a shower. And while you were in the shower, uh, one of your kids saw the dominoes on the table and lined them all up. And you know, then once they were all lined up, pushed a domino and watched all the dominoes fall. Is the last domino that fell your fault? No. Did you contribute to it? Yes, you bought the dominoes, you opened up the box and left them on the table. You contributed to that domino falling. It had nothing to do with you as far as the actual action of it falling, but you contributed to it happening. Let me give you another example. Uh, I come from the Russian River area in Northern California. The river used to flood when I was a kid five or six times a decade, and it's pretty simple to explain. You know, you've got inclines of uh, hills and mountains that are obviously a lot of land space three or four inches of rain on, on will soak up and then fall off via tributaries into the river and the water builds up faster than it can escape out the sea. That's a flood in a nutshell. Now, if you consider one tributary, is it the fault of that one tributary that the river floods? Uh, if the tributary is not sufficiently large enough it won't make that much of a difference if you block it off, but it will make a difference. The river won't flood as fast. Okay. Now, you would have to calculate how many tributaries you needed to block off so that the rainfall coming down off the hills and mountains didn't exceed the uh, exit flow of the river, and therefore it wouldn't flood. Now, if we draw this metaphor out to, you know, real life events, you know, we have this problem of international extremist terrorism. Okay there are an awful lot of tributaries that feed into this problem one of which oh shit one of which is US foreign policy another which has tributaries of its own may I add for example you know the the fact that we are and have always been for my entire lifetime utterly dependent on fossil fuels puts us in hock to certain regimes in the world which we would almost certainly rather not deal with if we didn't have to. Uh, you know, we do business with some of the worst regimes in the world. And they have an awful lot of similar beliefs to the people that we're calling our enemies. But we do business with them because, frankly, we don't have a choice. So how much does oil scarcity and the uh, rapidly approaching time of peak oil play into this? How much does the, the real politic of preparing for... Um, uh, what's, fuck shit, oh man, I'm going to have to edit that out. <clears throat> Three, two, one. How much is it a pure scramble for resources and treasure and, and territory by competing factions on the ground? How much is it a, a absurd, radical, and evil interpretation of the worst parts in a religious text. How much is it contributing to that? Because these are all contributing factors. Our foreign policy is one of many contributing factors and just changing our foreign policy and getting out of the region or whatever is not sufficient to stop the flood. We would have to stop an awful lot of these other contrib contributory factors. <laughs> Sorry. Contributory factors in order to actually stop this problem. One way you can't just stop the problem is by killing all the bad guys because killing bad guys has a way of producing more bad guys. I think we have witnessed that. 
And that's one of the things I'm talking about when I talk about our foreign policy exacerbating the problem of international extremist Islamic terrorism because we create the conditions for terrorism to thrive. Simply, if, if we, there are more than one example, but just simply the war in Iraq is example of that enough. And I find it extremely frustrating that there is talk about doing Iraq all over again in other countries. You know, haven't we learned our lesson? You can't kick over a fucking hive of bees and expect not to get stung. You know? So, yeah. Contribute, yes. Cause, no. That's my final fucking word on the matter. Um, and I wanted to make sure that I explain what I see as the difference. Thanks for watching this video. Sorry if I got a bit ruffled there. It happens. I'll see you soon. Until next time, may all your ups and downs be ups.